Hey guys, so we're gonna do something a little bit different this time around. We're gonna do a weekly trade recap, recapping all my trades I did from Monday to Friday. And all the good, all the good and the bad, my thought process, my trading discipline, and reviewing what I did well and what I need to improve on. So if you enjoy trading recap videos, make sure to gently tap the like button. Be careful with it, okay? Don't break your mouse. So let's get into it. So today, one of the gappers of the day was ASUR. It was gapping up because the company had some news about um, a potential $120 million deal to sell their workspace management business. Now, I did do some research. Um, this company, the market cap is only $100 million, So I don't know how they are going to sell a part of their business for $120 million. So that's right away, that's where it got onto my short watch and it was also gapping up from you can see right here 680s the night before to trading about 820 to 860s pre-market so i was leaning into this one short so i started shorting pre-market uh small size i have a video on my gap up strategy so basically until it breaks the pre-market lows around 818 then everything scalps only with smaller size. So started shorting pre-market, it starts working right away at the open, so that's usually a good sign. I covered some, reshorted on the pop back, and covered some, and I got I FOMO a little bit short, because I was thinking it's finally gonna break pre-market low, but I was anticipating, I wasn't waiting for it, so that was a bad ad right there. Thankfully, I added on the pops and covered really fast on the dips. And this is where I started seeing a lot of big sellers coming in every time the stock tries to spike up to 860s, 870s. So that's that's a good sign when you're short. You want to see you see a lot of big sellers selling in those key areas, pre-market highs. And it's the same thing here. But I was still holding a little bit short here. I covered some. I don't want to make the same mistake as I had earlier. I covered some here. I was trying to short the pops again, thinking that it's finally going to slam down uh, beneath the pre-market lows. And then I started seeing a lot of bids absorbing on the on the tape and the level two. And I can see that they are trying to prop it up again. So I covered a majority right here. So I was safe. I was okay to let it pop back up. I was still risking the pre-market highs around 870s, 880s. So I had some a little bit of profit from before. So I was okay letting this ride out a little bit more and cover up here if ne if it ever goes up there. So that's a benefit of keeping your size relatively small on the front side when you're shorting. So I so I never hesitate to cover. So I cover a little bit here because I thought for a second I saw a big buyer stepping in. But that was they pulled that bid really fast. Honestly if it was a true gap up short the pre-market low would have broken a lot earlier. This is where all the buyers were accumulating down here while they were propping the bid up at pre-market lows. The oldest buyers finally gave up. So that to me, when this broke the pre-market lows at 818s with such high selling volume, that's a confirmation for me to finally go in and attack it short, full size, adding on the pops. But I didn't check that it's after 11. I have this rule of not playing small caps anymore after 11. I've talked about this in my how to play uh, low float stocks video. Basically after 11, there's a bunch of fake outs and fake breakdowns. And I got trapped. I didn't take my own advice. I got trapped into that. Um, they were trapping. I got trapped basically. They were trapping shorts right here and that was one of them. So I was adding on the pops, adding on the pops, thinking that this $8 is finally going to give up and it's going to slam back down. Nope. They slowly, slowly prop it up with low volume. But, you know, I wasn't conscientious of that. I should have covered everything here, but, you know, I just kind of spaced out. And I was finally smart enough to cover everything here. So I was red on ASUR cover everything here and thank god I covered because it went back up and started chopping around again and what saved the day was I'm lucky what saved the day was MEET so this one I've been observing it for basically since the start of the run on Monday so after three days straight okay I was looking for a push parabolic possible parabolic on the fourth day and a failure of that momentum 
and to crack below yesterday's previous day close. That's this da dashed line right here. I was I was shorting this yesterday as well because there's a resistance right here at 450s. So I was shorting after I saw this fail yesterday. It's not it's fast trader only show the trades from today. It doesn't show yesterday. But basically I'm doing the same thing as I had done yesterday. After seeing um the highs a, a key level on the highs fail, I started shorting. I was anticipating this to crack down to support around 420s but we didn't quite get there we only went down to as low as 430s and so i shorted that yesterday so i, I had an idea of how the stock trades this stock actually is very like the since the range is low and it tends to trade in a really nice trend you can see this trend right like trend down downtrend and uptrend very very easy to identify and not chop around like as you are so same idea today, uh, shorted, I, I started to watch, missed the short here. The ideal entry would have been here, the lower highs after it failed to push higher on the daily and failed to hold the previous day close around 453s. So it cracked below the day's close, popped back up. This would have been the higher low to enter, but I missed that as well because I was busy with the ASUR. And I started shorting. Um, after I see this momentum crack, start shorting, cover majority down here because it's support from the previous day. But I was really small size because I made the majority of my money here. Started adding again after seeing that it was retesting the previous day close. I was expecting this to fail the first time. After seeing that it failed, failed, came back down, got bid up again, but failed again. And this time I saw some big bidders coming in on the level two. And that's when that push above previous day close again and I covered everything. So the second trade on this one was a loss. Uh, small size, shorting, shorting, and I see it finally covered everything down here. Right now it's October 9th, Wednesday, 11.30 market time. Doing some recaps on some trades I did today. One loser, two small winners, and one much bigger winner. So let's start with the loser on the day. IRBT. This one, it's, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> I messed up. <laughs> I literally saw the stock gap down overnight due to some downgrade. So I was looking to bottom bounce it because I saw some support on the daily chart around $54. Didn't work out, man. Longed a little bit pre-market. It's pre-market, long really small. And then tried to long it again. And then eh, it's just too heavy. Get out. Small loss. And, you know, should have went long. But So Roku is one of those stocks with, you know, every stock has kind of like a habit, like a personality, the way it trades. Every time it gaps up, for like five points overnight, or I guess right now it gapped up four points overnight. It tends to gap fill at these down to yesterday's highs. I get started in short around pre-market. I was adding seeing that it was trying to break down at the open and then it popped really back really quickly and added looking for um, the gap to fill. Cover some here, looking for more washes down towards 109 area, didn't get it. And that's when I heard on Benzinga, there's news about China and uh, the diplomats arriving in DC, they're gonna talk about a trade war and spy just ripped. And when that happens, I have to cover because I'm short Roku and this stock follows the market pretty well. So just a small win, nothing, nothing huge on Roku. Uh, next one, FireEye. So yeah, I, I trade quite a bit of uh, mid caps and large caps when the small caps are pretty dead. You gotta do it. Otherwise, there's nothing to trade during the summer and I guess slower times right now. So FireEye, it's uh, another one was was gapping up on strong guidance. It's The game plan was really similar to Roku. I was looking for those overnight gap up to fill. But the thing is, it didn't gap up as much as Roku. So really, in hindsight, of course, looking back, it's not really a good trade because the gap up wasn't enough. If it gapped up to $15, then maybe it was a stronger thesis to, to gap fill this down on the daily chart, $15, gap fill it down to um, $14. But, you know, this is what it is. Scaling short, adding on the pops, 
and looking to uh, to cover some near pre-market lows. Looking was looking for a wash down to at least the 1420s from the day before. Didn't happen, and the news came out just got a cover. Um, but eventually it worked later on. But I don't like to outstay my welcome. The bigger winner on the day was OCGN. So this one, um, really low float, low institutional ownership. It's also a former runner. So coming in, I was gonna wait to let it set up um, before I either go in long or short. I was looking, uh, it had to break the pre-market high of 170s and hold for me to be interested in the long. And uh, for short, if I was trying to short, I wanna see it pop towards 170s and reject really quickly. And another thing is it was on the watch list for um, a few of those high membership small cap chat rooms like I, that like to pump. So that's where a lot of this volume is in the beginning. So I was really surprised they couldn't even pump it towards 170. So I see that it never, it was really, really weak at the market open. These are three minute candles. It's just kind of like chopped around and like, if you were watching the tape, every time you see it try to break through 170 to so go to 176, someone just can't, comes in and slam it down. So I started in short, um, looking for it to stay weak near pre-market lows and reject VWAP and for me to keep on adding. And I added in a little bit bigger here. Um, I was covering some just in case because it was nearing 10, 30, 11. I wanna pay myself a little bit, um, just a little bit. But with these um, lower price stocks, you can take a lot more shares than a stock that's 120, of course. And then of course it dropped down a little bit lower, but I was all out. Um, I was gone for this entire time. Um, this is pretty impressive. I hope this stock holds up for tomorrow to give us like a second day or a third day. But honestly, this ugly, ugly daily chart. Wait, let me show you. This ugly daily chart is so ugly. Like, it has to break above $2 and then there's tons of resistance on the daily chart around 230s and then 250s. But what it has going for it is that it's a low, really low float. It's like 1.5 million. Uh, low I.O. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I think a lot of people got caught off, off guard with this because we haven't had really like a, uh, like a runner that can hold its gains for a long time. Everything just got sold off. That's it for today. Um, a small loser, a, two small winners, and a one bigger winner with OCGN. I'm uh, gonna do a red day recap. Yes, today I ended it red. And we're gonna talk about it right now. OCGN is my big loser on the day. Too big. And when, sometimes when I chase, I use chase size. So the chase size will be just a quarter. So I'll leave a lot of room for me to add. But I got in too big here. This was, this was already half my size. And then so when I was already half the size in, at this pop, I can only add a quarter and a quarter. And by this point, I covered a little bit, but still my overall average I was still red after this ad because I added so big at the beginning. So I was waiting for that to fail and it was just holding up above the previous day close and also above VWAP. So that's what got me super, super nervous. And I just had to cover and take 15 cents loss. So that's a big loser on the day. But in reality, if I waited and not have added in so big and save all my, the majority of my shares to add at the peak here, that would have worked out. But of course, everything is in hindsight. When your entry sucks and your sizing sucks, then you get shaking out, shaking out. And that's what happened today with me. So that's what I need to work on. Work on my patience, sizing, and uh, even if I chase. So today I, I was looking for failed follow through, right? So a lot of times what I see on the daily charts, when, when a stock gaps down on day one, it gets bought back up, usually it tries to push in the morning, it will fail, usually pretty early on, but today obviously it didn't work out. So this one I was a little bit more patient than the OCGN trade, I was waited for the pop. There's resistance around 5650s on the daily chart, if you scroll through to the daily chart, there's lots of resistance, oh my god, there's lots of resistance over there. This is why I like think of some charts so much better. This was a good entry and then added here. And I was looking for that follow, failed follow through really quick for it to sell off like here over early on. But that didn't happen and SPY was ripping. 
In reality, I cut it too soon because it never went above the resistance line I drew at 56.50. So if I had waited a little bit longer and perhaps I added, I, I didn't even have to add, but I could have. I should. Okay, I should have, of course, everything's in hindsight. I should have added here around this double top and that would have worked well. And cover a little bit here and set a stop lock and set a stop at entry. You know, I I traded this one poorly because I was trying to watch two at the same time. And a lot of times when I cut a big loser, I want to cut all the smaller losers as well and lose my patience. So again, need to work on the patience part. The other one I traded was a small win was Roku. So SPY was selling up. This was the trade after both losers on IRBT and OCGN. So what's my, it's my last trade on the day. So I think I talked about this yesterday. Roku is a stock that trends when, it's, when it picks a direction. So you just be, need to be on the right side of the trend. So, you know, the morning trend was the breakout, of course. I wasn't watching it at this time. And I see the trend change. And Roku is one of those stocks that that when there's a lot of selling pressure, it can sell off the entire game. You can say it sold off the entire game from the morning push and went back to test the yesterday's support. So when I see such strong momentum to the downside, I want to get in short on the pops. So I see it retest the previous day close price and I see, so that's when I scaled in short. I want to short on the bound. I cannot make the same mistake I did earlier on OCGN when I chased the momentum to the downside. So I, I was just watching, waiting for a bounce, never happened. And I finally see the bounce to previous resistance, pre-market pre lows, and I shorted. And when it starts working, I cover a little bit more. I added in on the follow through to the downside. When it popped a little bit, I got a little bit nervous, covered a small piece, so I can add again when the, the when the trade is confirmed. And I see it reject again previous day close. That's confirmed. Cover a little bit just in case that becomes a double bottom and retest br breaks above the previous day close and, and test v VWAP like right here. I see the follow through coming down to previous day support and then I covered. In reality, if I kept on watching, I would have added here. When I retest the VWAP, retest the previous day close and then VWAP and then fail follow through but I stopped watching at this point. So this is a very small win in comparison to to the bigger loss on OPCM. According to all my data, all my journals, on Fridays are the days where I mess up and then I'll give back my whole weeks of profit. So this year, starting this year, a couple months ago, I on Fridays I always, it's my personal rule, I always wait at least 10 minutes at the open to let things kind of set up before I even uh, go in long or short. And on Fridays, I trade with half my size. So if my full size on this stock is a thousand shares, on Fridays, my max size is 500 shares. That's just my personal rules and it's worked well, really, really well for me so far. And especially as you guys remember, uh, yesterday was a red day for me. So whenever I have a red day, it doesn't matter if it's a big red day or a small one, uh, the next day, my only goal is to be green. So I, have, I um, I'm always extra cautious because I don't want to be in that man mindset where I'm trying to make back all the losses from the day before. That's how I, I personally go on tilt. Then I'll trade really bad and, and the losses the second day will be even worse than the day before. So I always size down on the Fridays or the day after I had lost and to focus on trading well instead of trading to make back the money I had lost. So this is also one of those large cap or mid cap stock, probably large, large cap stocks that I've traded many times before that I'm pretty familiar with. This stock pushes a momentum at the open whenever there's good news. So that's exactly what it did, but I cannot chase this because I have to wait 10 minutes. So I see it popped to uh, from $34 to $34 almost $36 within the first 10 minutes. Now, I'm also ha I also always have the daily chart on the side. This is all-time highs. And the all-time highs for the stock is around $36. You don't wanna expect a huge pull because a lot of times strong stocks with fundamentally positive news, it's not gonna pull back that much, especially when it's a mid-cap earnings winners that likes to push, which is fast. So I shorted the all-time highs at the time, it was around 35, 
it was 3590s. I shorted around this time, 3580s, and I was okay to add at $36 if it pops. But it quickly really pulled, it pulled back quickly and I covered half, and then I covered a little bit more because I was anticipating, I was hoping, well, hoping is the right word. I was hoping for a pullback back to 35. But when I see that it's holding really strong, I just have to cover everything and do not fight the trend. And you can see it, it pushed higher a, lo a little bit later and then, you know, it, it held VWAP again, but I was already out of the trade. So it held a gap really nicely. So I'm looking next week, I will be looking for the stock to push even higher because again, good news, tech, good news fundamentally and technically on the daily, it's a breakout. Small winner on this one. The next one I traded is Roku. I think I've talked about how I like Roku a lot because this stock gives me a lot of range and I love range either up or down. So Roku gapped up overnight. I think it's like the third time this week I traded Roku. So remember uh, the day before on Thursday, I was short Roku on this bounce here and I covered here. To the, it gapped up overnight due to an upgrade by RBC Capital. So it gapped up from 116 to a high of 124. My rule again on Fridays, especially I will have to wait 10 minutes and especially after a red day. But of course this is in hindsight. This kind of gap overnight in the stock like Roku, it usually pulls back to fill the gap somehow, fill the gap around the daily support. So if I was if I was trading at the open, I would be sh trying to short this double top uh, with a pre market, risking the pre market highs for a potential gap fill back down to the the, the next daily support. So this is the area when I was trying to scale in short with a stock like Roku, you have to give it space to scale. So I scaled some at 121 and added more at 120s. And I was ready to cut it if it breaks 120s and flushes, which it did later on. But it started working, I sold into the pops, and actually you can see that here. I sold into the pops and I see a push higher and I see this quick rejection. That's when I see the trend, it's not over, like this is still a downtrend, right? On the one minute chart, Roku is still selling off. And I don't wanna fight the trend, especially on a stock like Roku. And so then I went short. Went short, I think it can go a little bit lower to 119s or potentially 118s before pulling back, before the big bounce. So I went short after I sold, went short, covered it a little bit, and when I covered down here, I accidentally bought a little bit more than my short position, so I got long accidentally. So when it's an accident, you just have to sell into it. And then right here, I started shorting again. I was thinking that this is gonna flush down to, again, 118, but it starts to hold, and that's why I covered everything here. But ultimately, this is a nice bounce that I was looking for when I went long at 121 and 120, but that came a little bit later, so. So the next stock that I was watching is SES. I personally didn't trade this one, but because I really didn't have much hope for the stock. It's a low float stock with 1.15 million shares. Um, the daily chart just, just looks like a dilution chart, right? There's so much bag holders on the daily. I really had no hope of it actually doing this kind of trap. Trap the longs over here and then trap the shorts and then like spiked up out of nowhere, trapped the longs, pulled back down again, and then squeezed all the shorts out. So this is this type of action that we haven't seen in a while in the small caps. So when we had when we had OP, OCGN a couple of days ago, that kind of did this, and then the next day it just gapped down. So I'm very interested in seeing how this reacts on the Monday. It squeezed up all the way to $9 after hours, I hope nobody is holding this one short uh, over the weekend because that's just gambling. Yeah, because I mean, I, I'm not long, I'm not short, but I am looking to play this one on Monday. Either I think it'll gap up towards $10 and sell off and then like trap all the longs and shorts again and do the same thing here, or it will gap down overnight, open up weak trigger SSR and then squeeze everyone out again on the day two. We saw very similar action with ELTK, squeezed everyone out at the end of the day on day one and on day two, they pulled it down to SS trigger SSR and then squeeze everyone up out again and create new highs. And then just trap all the longs when it, once it squeezed every, all the shorts out, trap the longs and then just dumped at the end of the day. 
So small caps, very, very manipulative. Gotta be careful, everyone. So anyways, uh, happy to end this Friday with a great note. Again, size is cut 50% in all my trades today, and I was extra cautious with taking profits and my entries. So it's a small win, but overall, I'm still green on the week, so which is nice. So guys, let me know what you think about this kind of format of trade recaps when I post one every single weekend. I'm happy to all your feedback in the comment section below. Also, I got a new mic, so let me know if you enjoy this new audio quality or not. And as usual, if you find these kind of videos really helpful, please remember to destroy the like button. And have a good weekend, guys.